And um, last, I will, you know, many of you are aware that the OPA complaint process for various reasons have gotten a lot of attention the last couple of days. And our intent at this point is to have a special public safety meeting this week. We're looking at a schedule. Uh, we, we've got some times possible. Just to sort of better explain this chart that many of you have seen that sort of <laughs> explains the OPA complaint process, and I bring that out a little facetiously because um, uh, there are some, as you, when you read the newspapers, you realize there are some cases being scrutinized, and what we thought, rather than get into the individual cases, is just to take sort of a robust look at how the process exists, whether it needs to be changed, whether when decisions are made we need to be more open and transparent, and so we thought a, a special public safety meeting sort of going over once again and having this process and having uh, both the police department and the uh, OPA director and, and the law department and possibly labor at the table to explain it to us may make sense. Great. So uh, that's that. Question Thank for you. Council Member Harrell. Um, we were all looking, I think, at this press release from the mayor that just came out, which states that uh, Chief Bailey um, reversed his decision and he reinstated the misconduct finding with regard to one case, and the mayor supports that decision, and it was that earlier decision by Chief Bailey that had a lot of people, including me, very concerned, and we began asking questions about it. So, But my understanding is that there were a number of cases that uh, Chief Bailey had overturned that had already been through the um, hearing process. They'd been closed, although I think they were on appeal to the Disciplinary Re Review Board or the Public Safety Civil S Service Commission. So. I think my question is, they acknowledge that they perhaps made a mistake in this one case, but what about the other cases? Well, that's the purpose of the special meeting, okay. to look at those cases, look right. at what's... I think, you know, there are several routes by which a decision can be overturned or it can be settled, and I think it's a little unclear to the public on how this sort of tr transpires. And so we'll sort of walk through the process and ask for a clear status report on all, whether it's seven cases or 20 cases that have been around for a while. Some of these cases have dated back for some time, and mm -hmm. so we will also want to better understand why some cases take years to for some kind of disposition. And, and I agree with what the mayor said that, you know, uh, Chief Bailey is looking at the hand he's dealt in terms of some of these older cases, trying to make rationally based decisions. And what's equally important about the not only is the substance of the decision made, but the process by which he reaches it. Mm -hmm. And that part seems to be perhaps lacking. And so let's have an open conversation about that. Well, so I think that's great. I'm glad that it's going to be uh, a conversation in an open public meeting. I think we need to, to do that. I had heard earlier that perhaps it was being considered to be uh, discussed in executive session, which I would not support. Um, what day and what time are you having this meeting? Well. If I, what I said was it's being scheduled, okay. and I think I think quite frankly, as to scare you a little bit, it might be Wednesday at noon is what a time that's been sort of thrown out. We have a big taxi meeting Thursday, and so we have a few and a few committee meetings this week. So mm -hmm. so that's a placeholder, but don't quote me on that. Okay, uh, we're working on the schedules now. Great. Uh, with respect to an executive session, there are some. Uh, appropriate matters to discuss in an executive session mm -hmm. with respect to personal, with, with respect to some pending labor files. And mm -hmm. so I think it would be very appropriate for us to get briefed with law uh, in an executive session on some very specific matters. Because sure, those are, sure. I understand. There are some that probably should be, but sure. generally uh, I think it should be a, a public meeting. I agree. Councilmember Lakata. Yeah, as the uh, situation that unfolded in this last week regarding the Marion case and uh, Chief Bailey's decision to um, basically reverse the initial decision to um, levy a um, sustained verdict, um, what's come to light is that aside from the merits of any individual case is that there were multiple cases out there that are still being negotiated between SPOG and management that I don't believe the council was aware of. We were under the impression that once the chief and the OPA director had made a decision uh, on a sustained filing, uh, that would be the decision. It's, close. Uh, it's come to light now that there's, uh, and it's, it's in apparently the, the manuals, uh, an ongoing negotiation than what uh, Councilmember Harrell has, has pointed out 
is that these negotiations may be going on for years through multiple chiefs. So the question is, when does the negotiating stop? Um, and also, how many are out there and who uh, is making the decision? Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my major concerns, again, aside from the merits of each individual case, is what is the, um, by law, what is the system that's being followed? Mm -hmm. um, and we need to tighten it, change it, uh, or is it being followed? So these are all questions that we need to raise. Yeah, very good point. I, I was wondering what authority the, the chief had to overturn a decision that had been made by a previous chief, but perhaps there is something um, that allows him to do that. But it's, it's very curious because I thought once the case was certified and closed, then there could be an appeal to those two bodies that I mentioned, but I didn't realize there was also perhaps a third way, well, a second way, that is some negotiations that can occur That's between labor. That's what it appears to be. And, well, and where um, does that, so what we need to determine is, is that true and where does that authority come from? Is it in the city code? Is it in a contract or how does that occur? You know, I mean, I could sort of give you a, my understanding of it, uh, but again, that's the purpose of the meeting. Uh, you know, I've gone over this chart a few times, which is very, which is really a complicated chart to follow <laughs> in terms of the process. But in addition to this, which not really captured on here, is the grievance process outlined in the contract. And between these two systems, it does seem to allow a, this prolonged negotiation, as Councilmember Licata uh, pointed out, which certainly, in my mind, wouldn't be a best practice to have mm -hmm. uncertainty for years, as we've had. And so that's what we'll try to modify. <clears throat> I think the third way certainly is not consistent with the OPA ordinance or what this council and the public perceive as the way we dispose of officer misconduct cases. And I think that's going to be the big surprise as we learn more about that. Um, which is, I think, troubling to many of us. And Council Member Clark? I, I think um, part of the conversation we're having here is helpful as well and, and to think about, again, in, in the open session, yeah, we should discuss the process. And, and it's really not about any of the individual mm -hmm. cases. It's really about this um, sort of new understanding that once a case has been closed, um, and I think closed is, is the word that we've all been using through time, that to have it um, reevaluated and then to have a finding adjusted, usually down, usually not to be a more serious finding, let's be honest, is surprising and, and is concerning. And I think it's, it's concerning, again, from a process standpoint about you know, most people do not pay attention once that, once that finding has been made and the case has closed. And so, yes, um, they get appealed. And I think the language about is it an appeal versus is it a grievance becomes uh, an important distinction. And to me, these have always been appeals that go to one of those two bodies. And I understand that there may be a labor grievance argument made by some that then that puts it into this third track that, that we really hadn't been thinking about very much to say, well, if it's a labor issue, we can settle it, set aside the original determination and somehow make a new determination. But I don't think that's how uh, most of the watchdog folks in the public or ourselves have, have thought about that over time. I've thought about it in the mm -hmm. language that you've used as, as an appeal mm -hmm. to one of those two bodies. Right. We've made the decision, right. and the appeal can be adjudicated. We may win, we may lose on that, mm -hmm. but we already made the decision. Um, and whether that, whether that subsequent action is tracked and appropriately put on the website, appropriately put into, uh, into uh, I can't remember what, what we're calling it, the officer uh, intervention systems, things like that, are all going to be questions now, I think, that, that have to be raised again. May, may I directly respond to Councilman Clark? The way the um, contract uh, agreement between this, the city and Spog reads is that it goes to the one or two tracks, the Civil Service or the Discipline Review Board. But apparently, in the language, there is room for the chief to do a settlement after well, actually, after they decide to go to the review board, but before the review board actually um, begins the process. Normally, one would think that that would take a couple of days or a week. Apparently, it's taking four, four years or, or more. Wow. And so that raises the issue of when does 
the appeal stop? Does it just go on forever? So, and you say that authority is in the contract between the city and the police officer guild? The, the, that's where you get into the weeds. To settle? The, you have to the look at the language, settle. and there may be some language there that allows for saw the chief to make a um, final decision based on negotiations. The problem is we've had multiple chiefs. Mm -hmm. So when a new chief comes up, comes into uh, authority, then does that prior decision end or does it just continue being negotiated through multiple chiefs? <laughs> and it's clearly a problem because uh, it's not consistent with the kind of transparency no. and openness that we desire. No, not at all. Um, the city through OPA is restricted to 180 days. Their investigation must be completed in 180 days or else it becomes moot and is not actionable. But it seems like the appeal process or the grievance process or whatever it's called now is limitless. California law for police officers in California um, restricts the entire process to one year. The appeals, the inv original investigation, the appeals, and everything has to be wrapped up within one year. So that, that it, it appears, regardless of these individual cases, that we have a flaw in terms of this open-ended yeah. um, process. I think that's so hard on everybody, because just, it just goes on forever without reaching closure and having certainty and learning from it and moving on. Council Member Sawant. Uh, in addition to the points that have already been made, and you know, I agree it's about the overall process, not only about the individual cases, although we should also look at the individual cases. But I think one thing that needs to be explained in the open, in the public session is uh, why, uh, why was it uh, seen as, why, why were the disciplinary action and the training seen as mutually exclusive? You know, they, they sh both should happen uh, and one does not preclude the other. And I think that, yep. that there should be a satisfactory explanation about that. So we'll have a discussion perhaps sometime this week, maybe Wednesday at noon in Councilmember Harrell's committee. He'll let us all know, I'm sure, as soon as that gets uh, scheduled. Councilmember Lakata, do you yes. have anything today? Um, yes, let me just, one, one final word to say that the council does have the authority to ultimately uh, pass um, regulations, rules, governing this process, the union always has a right if they want to negotiate the effects, but we still retain. We went through that discussion earlier, a few years ago, when we decided that we would have unredacted files available to OPA. We eventually succeeded in that effort, so um, there are some adjustments that can be made um, and probably should be made. 